In this video, we will integrate the Playwright MCP server with Cursor, and we're gonna generate a full Playwright framework with page object model with a simple prompt. Let's see it in action. Masters, this is important. In the last video, we saw how to integrate the official Playwright MCP server with Cloud AI. You can go ahead to my channel, Young Media, and look for Integrate Playwright with Cloud AI. That's the official um, MCP server from Playwright. However, today we're gonna use a different one. It is a not official server, but it was created by this guy, Execute Automation. Um, I think it is amazing and it has more tools than the official one right now. Probably is gonna change in the future, of course. But right now, this MCP server has is some awesome features like automatically code generation and so on. So I wanna try it out in this video and you're gonna see why, all right? So masters, I'll be using this particular repository. You just have to go ahead and uh, install it in your computer using, well, one of these commands. In my case, I'll be using the npm command. Basically, I'll be installing globally this particular package, execute automation, Playwright MCP server. So you just have to go ahead and copy it open your code editor or IDE, go to the terminal and paste it over here. It is gonna install your um, dependency and then we can go ahead and configure your cursor to use this particular MCP server, all right? It's very really simple and you're gonna see how it is gonna uh, be configured in a few seconds. The next step is configure the MCP server with cursor. It is so simple, let's do it. You have to go ahead and open the cursor over here, then settings and cursor settings, all right? Then look for the MCP, uh, well, kind of button here. Uh, and then you have to click on this button, add new global MCP server. Once you, once you, you do that, it is gonna open this JSON file, mcp.json. And inside of this, you just have to configure it like this, uh, let me just format this and I'll be saving this again, all right? <laughs> and it is a JSON, all right, with a simple uh, key. In MCP servers, you can have more than one for sure. But in my case, I only have the Playwright MCP server. You have to set this command over here and then in their arguments, a simple argument in the array. Uh, and it is basically the library that we just installed before, right? This one in the terminal that you can see. So once you have done that, you are able to run um, the MCP server. Uh, if you want to, you can restart cursor if it is not working right away. But then you can just open the chat in cursor. Let me close this just to start from scratch. And maybe you can ask for to the agent, all right, over here. You can ask if um, is the Playwright MCP server running? And it's gonna make a test if I'm not wrong, all right? Let me show you this. Let me check if the Playwright MCP server is running. So I'm gonna run the tool. And as you can see, there is a new browser opening and checking that we can access the server as expected. And it is telling me, yes, the Playwright MCP server is running and working correctly, all right? Now we can start with the automatically generation of the framework. It's gonna be awesome. Hey masters, I wanna show you the prompt. Of course, you can use other ones. You can improve this one. You can create one from scratch using good practices. But this is the one that I created pretty quickly just for the video, right? First of all, I want to use the Playwright MCP server to navigate to one website, sasdemo.com, the one that we used in the last video. Let me show you this. This is the website. It is a simple login where you can enter a correct username, a correct password, and you're gonna have a correct login scenario, all right? And also you have more users over there to test. So for instance, if you enter the logged out user and a correct password, here we're gonna have a kind of warning error saying epic sad face, sorry this user has been logged out, all right? Those are the scenarios that I want to automate automatically using the prompt. All right, so I am telling the prompt that I want to navigate to this website using the MCP server, ensure that it is actively handling the browser automation to validate its integration. I wanna make sure that we're using the MCP server, right? <laughs> and I don't want to sim simulate the test, uh, tests statically or bypass the MCP server because it is also possible. I just want to use the MCP server. I want to be explicit about it. 
right? Then I want to uh, execute a couple of scenarios on the login page. The first one is a valid login, all right? So enter the correct username, the correct password, click on the login button and verify a couple of things. The user is redirected to the inventory.html uh, and so on, right? I just wanna make sure that we can do some actions and assertions and see how the this kind of tools can help us to automate some stuff, all right? And then the second scenario is the locked out user and the password secret sauce. And I wanna make sure that there is a warning message or an error message displayed saying, sorry, this user has been locked out, all right? Then after both scenarios are validated using the MCP server, I want to use the code gen through the MP MCP server and use the code generated because the particular thing that this particular MCP server, this custom and not official server has is this part. Let me show you this. Um, in the cursor settings, you can see the MCP part here and it has this uh, tool, start code generation session and code gen session and so on. It has a set of tools that is kind of listening what is going on in the server and the actions and it is capture, capturing that and automatically generating code. So I wanna make sure that I'm using that particular code gen feature from the MCP server. That's the reason of why I want to use this particular MCP server um, uh, for this video, right? Then I want to organize the project inside a pattern folder, all right, named Playwright Python Framework. I want to have all the code generation in this particular folder and I have I want to have the following structure. I want the requirements.txt in the folder. I want a page a, or pages folder in my, in my framework to handle page object model, all right? Um, it is not to do page. It should be login page, right, in, under the pages. Um, then we have the tests folder. There we're gonna have the test login, um, well, a script using Playwright and PyTest. You can see that I have also the pytest.ini file over here. It is a configuration file and also the conftest.py where we can uh, handle different fixtures and all this stuff, right? Uh, also, I want to have a readme and then I just wanted to tell uh, or tell the the prompt in the prompt that I want to use Pytest as the test runner because you can don't if, if you want to you don't use it right uh, in this particular case with Playwright and Python um, save all files and dependencies inside of that particular folder I want to be explicit about where I want everything saved. Uh, and also do not place any files in the root directory because that's something was. That, that was happening for me. Also use the page topic model to store the URL, the locators, attributes, and actions of the login page in a simple object using Python, right? So that's it. That's the particular prompt that I'm using. I know it is not the best one. You can optimize it and have better practices, but I just want to have a, a simple example just for the recording, right? So let's try it out. So it is time to run this prompt. So I'll open the uh, chat. Uh, and I'll start over with a new chat here. And I just want to run this prompt. The only detail here is that I'm using, as I told you before, the agent mode, all right, instead of ask. So I just wanted to let you know that I'm also referencing the prompt notes under my, my folder. That's where I have this prompt over here. And I'll start, I'm gonna press send, all right? So as you can see, it is telling me that it is gonna help me to automate these login scenarios using Playwright with MCP integration, all right? So it is gonna start with the code generation, record our our Playwright actions, then we're gonna, ex they, or we'll execute both the scenarios while recording. And finally, we will we'll organize the generated code into the requested framework structure. That's awesome. So um, here, you can see that it is starting to ask for permission to start the cogen session. So I'm gonna run the tool, okay? Then uh, it is gonna ask me to start the execution of the scenario one, the valid login. So it is asking me for the permission to run the Playwright Navigate uh, action. So I'm gonna run the tool and it is gonna open a, a browser probably, right? 
Um, the browser should be over here. Let me show you the show it for you. There it is. This is the browser. Awesome. Uh, let me go back to cursor. Uh, it is asking me to run the playwright fill action to start filling the information in the form. So I'm going to run the tool. I'm going to go back to the browser. All right. Let me show you this. And now there is the standard user uh, text inside of the form in the username. Right. I'm going to go back to cursor, then playwright fill to fill the password information. And then we're going to have the login action. And we're going to use a different action now, the playwright click. This is configured in the MCP Playwright server from, um, let me rename, well, let me see, from execute automation, from this amazing software test consultant, uh, Karthik. All right. <laughs> awesome. Let's go to Cursor again. It, it wants to um, take a screenshot, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. No worries at all. And then it is going to start with the second scenario. Okay, so we're going to start with a navigate again to start with the second session. All right, there it is. Let me go back to cursor. Um, I'm going to start the filling. So I'm going to start entering the locked out username. If I'm not wrong, let me go back to Chromium. You can see it over here. Locked out user. All right. I'm going to go back to cursor and it is going to ask me to fill again the password. There it is. And then it is going to click on the button. And there it is. So um, it is saying that it is going to take a screenshot of the message and I'm going to run the tool. It's fine for me. <laughs> All right. You can see that there is a temporal folder uh, over here. I'm not sure what is going on there, but I think it is capturing everything, right? Mm. So then I'm going to close the playwright session. Now the browser is gone. And then I think the end code gen session is going to run as well. So we're going to close the code gen uh, session, basically, right? As the name, as you can see here, we have like a long filing TypeScript where everything is captured. Then automatically it is going to change the TypeScript um, file and commands to Python. It is going to be smart enough to convert it to different languages and different frameworks, you know, if I'm not wrong. So you can use this to generate mm, code in Selenium or Cypress. At the end, it is the, the base is mm, generate the scripts, the locators, but then we just, just have to transpile that to another framework, right? It's going to be pretty easy, right? So the next step here is it is going to start the creation of the mm, Playwright Python framework folder. And inside of that, we're going to have pages and tests. So I'm going to run the command. It is going to do a, a, a mkdir so it is gonna make a di directory <laughs> basically and as you can see now i have a new directory with the requirements pages and tests uh, as you can see the requirements are set already all right awesome and it is going to start the creation of the login page object okay so if i open here the pages login page you can see that i have everything set up for my login page as you can see, I have the URL, the locators. That, now that we have the page object, uh -huh, it created the conf test.py over here. Let me see under the tests folder. Basically, here we have a fixture to a uh, login. Awesome. And also, it also created, um, let me see, doo -doo -doo. Um, it also created the test file itself. There it is, test login. And as you can see, it is receiving the login page fixture. It is navigating through it. It is doing the login with the standard user and secret sauce as parameters. And then here we have the searches. Yeah, this is good. So it is asserting that the login page is on the inventory page. Basically, it is grabbing, grabbing the part of the URL and making sure that we have the inventory H, um, URL text in the URL, <laughs> you know, and uh, we also have some other validation here. All right. So awesome. And the logged out user, um, it's doing the same. We're just sending a different user, a uh, username, the logged out user to trigger this particular scenario. And we're verifying that we are still on the login page and the warning message is the one that we want. All right. So, so it's fine. That's awesome. 
as you can see then masters everything is done the readme is over here as well <laughs> with all the information and of course we can have more time to review the code and and see what is going on what could be improved because obviously from my perspective we're not there yet where we can just let an LLM do everything for us right but this is a good start my next step masters is to make sure that we can run this all right so I'm gonna accept everything as you can see we have our framework ready <laughs> all right so um, I'm gonna make a quick change here masters it is using a, an old version of playwright and I know that there is gonna be an issue if I try to install this requirement so um, I'm gonna change this to the latest version that is right now available and that's it I'm not gonna change anything else it is just a version in the requirements.txt okay so I'm gonna close this there's first of all I wanted to let you know that under the temp code gen folder here we have a TypeScript file this is the file where mm, the code generation it was stored and as you can see here is the test with all the steps navigate to the URL take the screenshot and field information click on the element and so on so I just wanted to let you know that what is going on here is that um, cursor is gonna translate this code into um, playwright with Python and yeah the at the end the code gen session is gonna generate this file in TypeScript so I just wanted to let you know and make a, a small warning over there, right? But that's it. Now that I have this uh, in place and you understand this, and now that we have the framework in Python using the MCP server session and all the stuff that just happened before, I'm gonna start the installation of the requirements. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna start with this particular instruction and it is basically create a new virtual environment name playwright python now that we have that i can run the command source playwright python which is the folder where i have the virtual environment bing and activate this is going to activate the virtual environment and you can notice it because now i have it i have this at the beginning of the uh, terminal right if i clear this you can see it over here we're working in the virtual environment then masters, I'll install the requirements using a simple command here. It is going to take the reference of the requirements.txt and that's it. It is going to work. It is not working. <laughs> so the reason of why this is not working is because I need to enter to the framework itself. There it is. All right. Uh, you can see that now I have the requirements.txt over here and I can just install it or install the requirements. So. There it is. It is just collecting everything, installing everything, and there it is. It is working fine now. Now that I have everything installed, masters, the next step is pretty simple. I just need to run the command python -m pytest tests. And what is going to happen here? It is going to use the pytest test runner to run our playwright tests and all the stuff that was configured under the framework. So there it is. Um, let's see if it works. So the execution is gonna be pretty fast, but at the end you can see that both of the test cases or the test scripts are executed and they both passed. So masters, I know this is awesome. Um, I think we can use this technology to construct like small demos, um, POCs, right, and so on. We can probably use this kind of technologies to map page objects, uh, create code, help us in our daily um, basis, right? But we also have to make sure that what is being automatically generated has the correct practices. We're doing a, we're using a good structure of, and, and I don't know, a lot of factors that we have to take into considerations when we are developing a framework, right? But this is a good start. And I hope that you can take advantage of this and I hope that you enjoy it for sure. So, Masters, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching your media. And I hope to see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.